I'm Tom from Do-It-Yourself Home Automation, and this is an overview of choosing different battery types for your off-grid solar system. So if you're using solar panels for an off-grid application, you're probably, in the best case scenario, only going to get usually about maybe six or seven sun hours per day. So if you're going to run anything overnight, you need to find a way to store the energy that your panels generate during the day so that you can use it 24 hours a day. And obviously the solution for that is some kind of large bank of batteries. Now there's a few different kinds that people generally use. The first and simplest, and what I have here, is a lead acid battery. This is what you'd have in your car or your boat or RV. Um, and it's sort of the workhorse of the battery category. They tend to be fairly inexpensive. They're just filled with giant lead plates um, and sulfuric acid. And again, they're relatively cheap for the amount of power you end up with. The disadvantage is, is that they're heavy. Um, they don't have as good of a lifespan, so you, you probably can only use them for a couple of years. And they also require periodic maintenance. So you actually have to open this panel up and add distilled water um, to the battery, probably about every two weeks if you're using it fairly heavily, sometimes even more often. So again, inexpensive, um, but you have that, uh, that challenge of having to do the maintenance, and also they're heavy, and the lifespan is not that great. Um, the second category, uh, what we would uh, call either a gel cell, or uh, there's another version, it's an AGM battery, um, and all of these are sealed batteries, where it's very similar to this, it's still got lead plates inside, but it's designed so that uh, you don't have to do that ongoing maintenance all the time. And um, those batteries are generally more expensive than these very basic uh, kinds of lead acid batteries, but they're great if you're building an off-grid system where you don't want to have to go and constantly do the maintenance. And usually they're a little higher quality, so you're going to get a better uh, lifespan. Also, one other thing to note, you have to keep this upright or else the acid will leak out. Generally with AGM batteries or gel cell batteries, you can keep them on their side or position them somewhere else so you don't have to be as worried about having that acid come out. And then the final category that I think is really exciting is fairly new is lithium batteries. Um, and these are much, much more expensive than any of the other solutions. So you could pay for the same, um, technically the same amp hour capacity, which is how these are measured. You, for this battery, this is about 120 amp hours. This battery costs about $120 at um, Home Depot, so it's just a very, very basic thing. A lithium battery for a solar setup would probably run you maybe $900 for something of the same capacity. And again, that seems like a lot more, obviously, but there's some huge advantages with lithium. Um, one is that with all of the other battery types I've mentioned, including this one here, you really only want to discharge it to about 50% of its overall capacity. If you go any lower, especially with these kinds of batteries, the, the lead acid, you can actually damage the cell or just reduce its overall lifespan over time. And um, a lot of the batteries are called deep cycle, so technically you're supposed to be able to take them down to 20% of charge. But if you do that routinely, you end up wearing your battery out a lot faster. Lithium batteries, on the other hand, um, discharge and charge a lot faster. They can handle a lot higher charging current, so you can hook up more cells to them and charge them very, very quickly. And one of the biggest advantages is that they can go all the way down, almost all the way to zero um, for multiple cycles, sometimes thousands of cycles of charging and discharging without damaging the battery. Um, and also they are maintenance free. So uh, with lithium, again, much higher initial purchase price, but you'll have something that could last you in theory, up to 10 years, and you're actually getting 100% of the power versus with these, even though this is a 120 amp hour battery, really only take it down to 50%. So I'm only getting, you know, 60 amp hours. And even like with that, it's probably never fully 100% charged. So I'm really only getting about 50 amp hours out of this versus with a lithium battery, I'd be getting the full 100 or whatever it was rated for. So again, you know, some factors to consider price, whether you feel that you're able to do the maintenance on it, um, whether it needs to be on its side or upright, um, and then overall just, you know, how much capacity you need to be adding for your system. If you found this helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel for more of these kinds of videos.